Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be taking a look at the all new rabbit tape by Safari Pedals. Let's get into it. So like I said, welcome back. Chris here. Today we're going to be taking a look at this rabbit tape. It's an all new tape plugin just dropped fresh a couple of days ago. As you can see, it looks something like this. Just to quickly dive through what you can see on the plugin, as you can see the main things are we've got this reel to reel and this cassette. That changes a lot of the characteristic that I can hear on the input going through it, on the sound that runs through this plugin. But the majority of your controls lie between your input output and this grid control. You also have some wow and flutter, which are some classic tape sounds basically, as well as a blend and a width control. Lastly, we've got some oversampling. There's an auto gain, which basically links the input and the output, as well as a master bypass and your presets on top, which is very nice. I'm just gonna grab some headphones, but let's quickly listen to the track I've got and get a feel about what this is adding to it. You've just heard the track now i'm going to quickly dive into what it's adding to this song in general i think the best place to start is the drums because that's where i feel it's doing a lot of heavy lifting i've got something interesting going on the keys piano section and we'll dive into that a little bit later but let's start here so i'm just going to solo the drums and we'll listen to what that sounds like So you can hear it's very crunched, it's very squashed. There isn't actually much happening on the reduction side of this plugin because I've actually could, got the input pulled back a bit, the output pushed, but I'm using heavily a lot of this grit control. And that's adding a real lot of saturation. I'm just gonna play the drums without it and then I'll turn it back on. So you're gonna hear it bypassed first. So even though it's not necessarily doing as much compression, it's getting a lot of this squash and crunched sound from this grit. Let's quickly hear what it sounds like when I pull back the grit and you're just hearing a little bit more of the compression from the actual plugin. So you can see there when I pull back on the grid control, we're getting a lot less squash from that saturation. It's becoming a lot cleaner. Then when I push the input going into the plugin, you get a lot more compression and that has its own unique kind of squash. So in this case, I've opted to have less kind of dynamic squash from the compression using a bit more grit to get more saturation. So now let's take a look at the difference between reel to reel and cassette. To me, it feels like there's a kind of different tone thing going on. The cassette feels a lot lighter than the reel to reel, but you be the judge. So to me, it feels like you're getting a lot more low end from the reel to reel. The cassette is maybe a little bit brighter, but less low end. So you've got an interesting bit of flavor to pick from. I would assume if you may be using it on a certain instrument that doesn't necessarily need as much low end, you could opt for the cassette sound and change it up depending on which you feel might need more of that high fidelity reel to reel or maybe a bit more lo-fi cassette. So next I want to talk about the wow and flutter control. They're both very classic tape sounds that you can find. I'm going to, in this case, use a piano sound. 
So this is going to give you an idea about what's going on with the actual control of these. I've copied this plugin over from the main keys group channel. I'm going to get into that a bit later. There's 50% grit. I'm pushing it about 10 dB on the input, but I've got auto gain on, so it's also pulling it back 10 dB. And this is what it's adding. You can hear it's very squashed, very distorted. Right now, I'm going to pull back on the grit just to show off what the wow and flutter are doing. So, if we hear it clean, but now I'm going to add some wow and flutter. So, I'll start with the wow. You can hear it's basically pitch modulation, I can really overdo it. But if you add just a little, just a hair of it. adds a really nice texture to that sound. So wow, you can look at as this kind of pitch modulation sound and then flutter. It's more like a, almost like a tremolo, but if you had set the rate to random, so it's just kind of jumping in and out quite crazy. And obviously I can make that a lot more subtle. Add a little bit of the wow to that. And you start getting a lot more of this kind of nostalgic feel. If I wanted to go really nostalgic, I can put it onto cassette, maybe give it a bit of saturation. starting to drive it a little bit, almost making it feel like it's coming out of a smaller box. Really nice. At the bottom, you've got this width control. I don't think it necessarily changes the width because if I pull this all the way back, it doesn't become mono. But I imagine the compressor built in is now reacting in mono as opposed to when you pull it up and there starts to be a little bit of stereo independence. If I put this all the way, you can see that one side might move a bit more than the other side. I'm just gonna keep it in the middle for now. So one thing to take note is that if I'm using WOW and I pull this blend back, the blend being like a mix control, you're gonna start getting some phasing, almost like a chorusy kind of sound. For some, this might not be a good idea depending on the instrument, but in the case of this song, I actually put this plugin on the keys group in general, and I did just that. I used a lot of wow, a bit of flutter, some grit, the compression, and I pulled the blend quite a bit back. So what it's doing now is adding this chorusy sound. And for me, that is quite a unique sound in itself. I might go and reach for a couple of plugins to do that, but I quite like the idea of getting it all from this plugin. Again, maybe not the appropriate use for it, but I quite like to find other ways to get similar sounds, you know, if it saves me a couple of clicks here and there. And I quite like the sound of this. I'm also using this whirly sound with a little bit of a delay and reverb on there. And it's just adding a little bit of this interesting modulation. If I had to turn this off, it's quite a plain whirly sound with some delay on it, you know, but if I put it on, it now has a lot of this just organic atmosphere to it. Really interesting chorusing sound, which I dig. And I've got that on everything in the keys channel. So now everything kind of sits in this weird, wishy-washy world. I had tried putting this on the master. I can show you the vibe that it sounds like, basically.
it's a lot more squashed. I'm riding this grit at 28%. I could probably pull that back because everything is starting to sound a little bit saturated. But overall, I really dig this plugin. It's got a really nice sound and I can definitely see myself using it on a lot more projects. On top of all the other Safari pedals plugins, they've all become really convenient and very much a staple in my productions. And that's about it, really. That's everything I wanted to mention about it. Again, really great plugin. Shout out Safari Pedals. You're really smashing it with these plugins. I figured I might as well leave you a heads up now. This video isn't sponsored. They did send me the plugin, but we've got an affiliate link going down in the description now. So if you buy the plugin through the link, I'll get a little commission from that, which is quite nice. So yeah, go ahead and support Safari Pedals and support me i guess at the same time as well but yes if you enjoyed this video don't forget to like and subscribe the support really helps and thank you to everyone who's done so so far we're picking up on some new subscribers so it's nice to see all the new faces here so thank you guys for joining so far once again i've been chris vela and i'll see you guys on the next one